Okay, uh, in the interest of sticking to time, actually, uh, we're going to move on to the next presentation, but I know that Professor Goff is here, uh, and we'll be happy to take questions uh, in the interval afterwards. So we'll move on to the next speaker, please. Uh, and this is <coughs> Dr. Morin from Canada, a randomized clinical trial to evaluate the effectiveness of incomplete milking in early lactation to reduce ketonemia and hyperketonemia. Um, hi everyone, I'm really uh, happy to be here with you uh, today. So, um, the energy balance is uh, the output of two elements. Here you have the energy, intake, uh, energy income corresponding to the dry matter intake and the energy outcome in early lactation corresponding to the milk production. The peak of uh, milk production come before the peak of uh, dry matter intake. And this put the animal in an unavoidable um, negative energy balance. This negative energy balance, um, it occurs uh, a fat mobilization and uh, triglycerides uh, from the adipocytes just um, liberates their um, free fatty acid chains in the bloodstream. So uh, those uh, free fatty acid chains can be uh, undergo three ways in the, in the liver. First, they can be just um, uh, re-esterified as triglycerides and uh, they can be just re-exported in the bloodstream or um, they can be stored in the, the, the liver. They can, be, uh, they can undergo a total oxidation in the Krebs cycles to produce energy. And when this, is, uh, this, uh, this, is, uh, this process is surpassed, so it produces ketone bodies which goes into the bloodstreams. Uh, it is normal to have ketone bodies produced, but during an extended catabolism, too much ketone bodies increase the risk of disease, like uh, fatty liver, hyperketonemia, retained placenta. A lot of improvement have been made in, uh, by reducing the negative energy balance in early lactation with uh, the feeding programs. So, um, but a recent study performed in a research station suggests that it was possible to limit the impact of the negative energy balance in beginning of lactation by reducing the milk withdrawn during the milking in the first five days of lactation. We wanted to see if it was applicable in commercial dairy farms. So, um, uh, yes, to reduce the milk volume uh, withdrawn during the first five days in milk for mature cows to see if it uh, will be able to decrease blood ketone bodies and the prevalence of hyperketonemia. 800 cows were recruited in uh, 13 uh, herds uh, and they were randomly allocated to, uh, to the complete milking, which one was the conventional protocol on the farm. Uh, where all the milk were withdrawn during the first five days in milk uh, from the udder. And uh, 400 cows were uh, on the treatment group, where um, only 10 to 14 kil uh, liters per day were withdrawn of the udder um, for the first five days in milk. Of course, the control animals had the same sampling protocol than the treatment protocol. So well, here, you have the red line uh, referring to the calving date. So this, um, uh, all the animals uh, had three BHBA measures and six uh, body condition score measures. This is the device that we, uh, we use to, uh, to measure the, the BHBA. It is uh, the pre Precision Extra. It is uh, easy, fast, and inexpensive. It is already validated. And uh, we use the, the, the threshold that you will find in the literature about um, 
about hyperketonemia or subclinical ketosis is 1.2 to 1.4 millimole per liter. But um, this, with this device, uh, the specificity and sensibility was higher with the 1.4 millimole per liter. So that's the one we use to, uh, to decide if the cow was hyperketonemic or not. Here are the results of the linear model. So on the vertical axis, you have the BHBA blood level, and uh, you have these in milk on the horizontal axis. Um, we wanted to see uh, if uh, first the treatment was linked to, uh, to periods of uh, these in milk. You have the mean, during the four to seven days in milk uh, period, you have the mean in blue of the incomplete milking protocol. Uh, and we can see with the, the blue shadow on the back is the 95% uh, confidence interval. So we can see that it is higher than the, 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 for, the incom for the complete milking protocol. It is higher than the incomplete milking protocol that we can see in, in the, the red dash line. For this period, for the four to, to seven days in milk period, it is significant. And uh, it is, there, there is a tendency to be lower during the eight to 17 days in milk period. Um, so this indicates a, a, resid a residual effect of the milking protocol. And during the, the, the one to three days in milk period, there's no, um, no difference. And uh, that's normal because the milk would, would drown for, the, for those days were similar between groups. And there was no difference for the, NT, the 18 to 26 days in milk too. In terms of numbers, um, <clears throat> for the four to seven days in milk period, it was uh, the incomplete milking, you have the mean here, it's uh, 0.75. It was lower of 17% of the complete milking protocol, and this was significant. For the incomplete milking, um, the relative value were lower of 6%. It was uh, lower than the four to seven days in milk period, but, uh, and it was a tendency to. We wanted to see um, if uh, the treatment was linked to other elements that could help a dairy manager to decide if a cow will benefit, will benefit of an incomplete milking more than another. Those elements were parity, if a younger, car, younger cows were um, more prone to benefit from this protocol because uh, a part of the energy goes for the growth of the animal itself. Body condition score before calving, if fat cows will uh, benefit more from this protocol or not. The variation of body condition score during the, the, during the pre-calving transition period. The breed class average for milk, uh, fat, protein uh, of the previous lactation, allowing us to compare cows uh, between each other. Dystocia, clinical hypocalcemia, and retained placenta, if those events occur during the, the, the present calving. For the logistic regression, we have um, the, the, same, uh, the same days in milk period here. We can see that um, for the incomplete milking, uh, it is the, the relative proportion is lower of 55% versus the complete uh, milking protocol. Oh, sorry. And for the 8 to 17 um, days in milk period, it was lower of 22%. Um, this, uh, once again, for the 8 to 17 days in milk period, it is, uh, it is lower of the first one, of the 4 to 7 days in milk period, but it is still significant. Yes. So... In conclusion, I present a simple but uh, innovative approach aiming to reduce the impact of postpartum negative energy balance. The incomplete milking protocol is efficient to reduce ketone bodies and hyperketonemia in early lactation compared to the conventional milking protocol. 
It is easy to perform uh, this method on farm without expensive material, and no drugs are necessary. By reducing hyperketonemia and its associated disease, we could expect that longevity will increase and loss in productivity will decrease. This is the first step of a larger study which will explore the impact of this protocol on welfare, productivity, bell components, somatic cells, reproduction, early herd removal. Uh, if you want to hear more about the welfare for this protocol, uh, Katarina Crew will uh, do a posture during the posture se session. And uh, so the impact of the incomplete milking protocol needs to be evaluated on those aspects of the dairy pro production to evaluate its effectiveness on all points before being widely applicable on the farms. But at least the first step is a, su is a success. Thank you very much, Dr. Moran. Uh, we've got time for some questions. Uh, there are two gentlemen with the red tops uh, who have microphones available for any questions. Uh, when you ask a question, please state your name uh, and also uh, where you're from as well. So question down at the front here. Okay, you're gonna get two microphones at once, but there we go. Okay, thank you. Pedro Melendez uh, from University of Missouri, United States. Uh, regarding milk production, if you correct in your model for milk yield, for milk production, if you consider that in your model, uh, statistical model, and also what was the milk production between both groups? Uh, you, you mean the mean production of the total lactation? Or at least the, the first 30 days uh, accumulated. Okay, okay. Um, it, was, it was about for the, for those, for, for the milking protocol that, uh, the, on the bench, uh, it was 10 to 14. And for uh, the other cows, it was maybe 20 to 25 a liter per day. So this was the difference. Am I answering your question or not? Uh, no, we don't, actually, yeah, for the cows. No, it's okay, thanks. <laughs> That's good. Hello, uh, Lukas Huber from Austria. <laughs> sorry. Yes, sir. Um, I'm just, sorry, I'm just wondering how an incomplete milking protocol affected um, the total milk yield during the rest of the lactation? Yeah, uh, we did. Um, we did only on 400 cows. This is a, those are really preliminary results. But there was no difference about uh, the, about the, the, the fifth, uh, the fourth weeks after calving. Uh, both uh, the treatment protocol and the other one was similar. Yeah, there was no difference after that. So. Time for one more question at the front. Yep. Luzbel de la Sota, Argentina. My question is, do you have the 305 um, uh, lactations and were they different or at the end or were similar? Uh, in fact, we don't have uh, look at those data before. We just use uh, the breed class average of the previous uh, milking production, uh, milking uh, lactation, sorry, um, to, to see if there was a difference, but uh, this will come uh, soon, yeah. It is the next part. Okay, thank you very much. I'd like to thank Dr. Moran.